Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivraman of iNoIndices.com. Hope I am audible to you. Good day, Santa. Thanks for confirming it. Okay. Let me start the webinar using the PowerPoint presentation. Asian session live market analysis on December 12th between 5 and 5.30 GMT. We will track the market using the live market code page. I go in the link for the same. Let me focus the camera over that of the live market code page. Yeah, now you should be able to see the live market code page. Hero is currently trading around 1 1.3335, 1.3337. 1.3335 has become the low, 1.3385 is the high, 49 puts negative at change is seen. So it was making up and down moves on Friday and finally they gained the levels to that of 1.3378 and made a brief upward stop and then start making the slide during the start of the Japanese session and they formed the low 1.3344 and they breached the low and they are staying below that at the current moment. And in the case of JPP, it is holding around 1.5629, 1.5633, 1.56. 3.0 was the initial low and 1.5628 has become the new low, but still it is holding around that of 1.56 area in order to handle Euro GDP, which is trading around 8530, 8533 level, and 1.5656 is the high and 38 pips negative net change is seen. But in the case of yen, on Friday it came down to 77.40 area and 77.63, 77.66 are the current levels. 77.57 is the low, 77.68 is the high, and you find uh, it is almost flat. And when Euro GBB and USDN are making negative net changes, you find the N crosses also showing the nominal negative net change of 30 to 48. And Euro Yen is showing about 37 pips negative net change. It is trading around 103.55 and it's almost closer to low. And GBB is trading around 121.37, which is closer to low with 28 pips negative net change. So they could make a downward stop. And in the case of USDN, in order to make further downward, little bit of downward stop and about 22. 40 pips on the downside, then the psychological levels could be seen closer to that, and then they are expected to rise from there. And in the case of Swiss franc, it is trading around 92.69, 92.72, is the low, 92.76 is the high, 39 pips positive net change is seen. Then Euro is making about 47 pips negative net change. USDCHF is showing only 39 pips positive net change. So they are holding USDCHF, not gaining much level, corresponding to that of the drop in the case of Euro. This is mainly to gain some levels in the case of Euro CHF. 1.2365, 1.2370 are the current levels, and 10 pips positive net change is seen in the case of Euro CHF. Then coming to the of so in the case of majors, you come across Euro GBB and Yen are showing negative net change as a contrarian move. And USD CHF is gaining. So it is expected to gain further levels, USD CHF, and then from there it may come down a little bit when Euro is gaining the levels. This way, Euro CHF, they wanted to gain the levels more during the day. And in the case of commodity pairs, USD CAD is trading around 1.0205, 1.0209. 1.0182 is the low, 1.0212 is the high, 37 pips positive net change is seen when Australian dollar is showing about 47 pips negative net change. Again, in the case of Canadian dollar, they are gaining less when compared to that of the drop in the case of Australian dollar. This is again to handle their respective crosses and slowly they are expected to reverse it and Canadian dollar is expected to gain the levels to start with and hold then Australian dollar is expected to gain again. So it is weak beginning. It's weak beginning. So they intend to make some moves in the case of the crosses to start with. Then subsequently they are expected to come to that of the majors 
from that of the late Japanese session. So you find subdued moves are happening and the spread between the low and the high is very minimal when compared to that of the normal other days. So which indicate that the volume is relatively less in the market and the players are simply holding it and making small swings in order to attract the traders to commit positions. So normally the traders try to do the breakout trade because they find a lot of uncertainties. When Eero goes below that of the technical support level, then the traders could go and short it and then players are expected to gain the levels from there trapping the short sellers. So after the drop, don't sell. After the rise, don't buy. We try to do that breakout trade. The players are uh, now uh, more frequently making the upward and the downward stop and mainly to trap the breakout traders because predominant traders are doing breakout trades and that is why they are trying to do this sort of moves. Let me go back to that of the PowerPoint presentation. Explain to you the expected market moves for today. Swing and firm up moves are expected during that of the Japanese session. And again, you could come across higher level swing and then slide towards close of European session. Then again, swing and rise moves are expected during that of the US session. So either way, they are expected to make up and down moves and there could be stop ends. Now they are doing the downward stop end and they are expected to gain above that of the initial lows very shortly and then start expected, I mean, they are expected to gain the levels during the early European session and then come back during that of the late European session, giving the feeling that the market or Euro and JPV, they do not have the strength to go up. Then afterwards, when the trade is going for a breakout trade towards close of European session, on the downside, the players are expected to accumulate them and try to gain the levels quickly during that of the year session. So I already given the expected market moves in my blog, I know com slash blog. And once this webinar is being recorded, it will be posted in FX Street.net and also in FX Street archives, you will find the webinar and you can also review it, how exactly the market is expected to behave during this particular week from time to time you can cross check and find out then with regard to the expected market moves for the rest of the days in this particular week tomorrow you could come across more volatile moves less drop and more gain moves are expected to happen so every session we could come across a dip and then quick rise to a close of the session that sort of moves are expected tomorrow then subsequently, after gaining above that of Friday high, they are expected to continue the gain on midweek. So Monday, they are ex I mean Wednesday, they are expected to make an upward gap opening and try to gain the levels during the, of the day with a little bit of volatile moves on Wednesday during that of the EO session and then gain further up towards close of EO session. And Thursday and Friday, we could come across the visible gains happening in the market and they could bring in the upward spikes on Thursday and that could continue on Friday. So these are all the expected moves. Slowly you will find the market gaining momentum and the rest two weeks, they are expected to aggressively gain the levels in the market. And people might be thinking that Euro and GPV are trading in a range because of the less volume and things like that. And the players are long-term players. So they accumulate more and more of a buy position around 1.33 area and book profit around 1.34 area and come down to 1.33 and 5. And slowly you would have noticed that in the case of GDP, they have gained the levels. They are not losing it that much, even though which is considered as a sentiment creator in the market. JBB is considered as a sentiment creator. They create a bearish field by dropping more in the case of GBP, but they are holding it. And only in the case of Euro, they just talk about the uncertainties in Eurozone and try to make the swings in a 100, 150 pips range. And they are expected to gain the levels very quickly during this particular process. And that could be an unassuming gains in the market. Then afterwards, you could come across the last week of the month 
uh, more aggressive gains and the gains are expected to sustain during that of January and February of 2012. So you could come across more aggressive gains happening in the market during coming days. So avoid doing sell and buy trade. You might be vulnerably trapped. And what you can do is you try to take a buy near that of the low or during a downward stop and then book profit during that of the upward move and don't sell to buy back again. Instead, wait for any other drop during session close or session start time and try to take the buy position and book profit. If you do that way and when you're able to keep stop at entry and trail it up, you'll be able to really see that swing trade opportunities provided there and subsequently when they start gaining it, the last buy will be able to give an immense position trading opportunity. But on the downside, if you try to trade it, then you might be suddenly trapped because by creating this sort of range bound moves, they will induce the traders to do sell and buy trade at the lowest level. And similarly, you have noticed that when it was around 1.48, 1.49, they created the bullish field and continuously trading around 1.37, 3.80 area to 3.9. And when they had done it that way, Many people thought that it's very easy to do buy and sell trade in the case of Euro. And highest level, they will just try to give profit on few occasions for the buy and sell, tra buy and sell trades, but suddenly trap it by making a downward move. Similarly, on the lower side, they will induce the traders to do sell and buy trade and give the profit to start with, then subsequently trap them vulnerably by making aggressive gains. So, Avoid such emotional trades. With regard to the initial lows and the high, zero formed the low 1.3344 as the initial low around 330 GMT and they formed 1.3335 as the new low and come closer to that of 1.3344 now. So it has come to 1.4444, I mean 1.3341, are the current levels. And they are expected to gain slowly the levels above the top 1.3344 and sustain there and try to go above that of the high and make an upward stop and, and then try to make the slide during that of the late European session and then continue to gain the levels. In the case of GBP 1.5630 was the initial low. They cut it by two pips and they are just holding it around that of the initial low and they are expected to come up soon and 1.5656 is a high which is undisturbed then in the case of ch of 90 to 30 is the low and 9269 was the initial high and they breached the high and formed 9276 as the new high about five pips above and they are holding around that of the high in the case of yen 57 57, sorry, 75, 57 is the low, 77, 68 is the high. They are not breached the higher the low. It has become almost a subdued currency. So they are earning elsewhere. That's why they are not bothered about making swings in the case of yen. Then in the case of Australian dollar, 1.0167 was the initial low. They breached the low by about five tips, 1.0162 has become the low and they are holding around that of the initial high. The initial low, 1.0167. Current, yeah, it has gone above, 1.016770 has become the current level. So they are expected to certainly gain the levels to 1.021, so that is the high and reach above during the day. And in the case of a Canadian dollar, 1.0182 is the low, which is not breached. 1.0211 is the high. They breached the high by about one tip. 1.0212 has become the new high. And they are holding below that. So they are expected to make a range bound move here and continue to gain the levels in the case of Canadian dollar during the day and also in the case of Swiss franc. And Alternatively, you will come across the gains in the case of Australian dollar, euro, and GDP as well. So let me go back to that of the pop, uh, the live market quote page and try to answer to the number of questions which are asked here. 
in Reno. Do you see the number 25th gap filling this week before the aggressive upward move? Uh, I'm not anticipating any sort of big downward move uh, today or any of these coming days because they need to have a purpose for it to make an aggressive downward unless and otherwise all the traders try to hold long positions and they are not willing to sell, then they may drop it and try to induce them to liquidate the long position, giving certain technical parameters as the indicator for a big drop in the case of the market and then accumulate all the sales and then go up. But the way in which the market behaves last week, I was in a position to understand that after the gain, the traders are buying it, expecting for the gains quickly, but then they are just dropping the market and induce them to liquidate the long positions. So, but the traders are not shorting. That's a problem. So, we should come across some interesting aspect coming in. Then, yes. What about Australian dollar move per year end? Australian dollar could gain some more levels and probably it could range in that about 1.0050 to 1.04 area. Australian dollar is expected to make the swing that way and for new year they could go up to that of 1.05 or 06 area by January, February and start making the drop again. Then Egypt, what could be the range for Euro today and the rest of the week? Euro downside is limited according to my understanding. Probably they may make a brief down stop and like what they have done it. But the upside potency is great. And they could use any trigger just to gain the levels. And only thing is, you have to see whether they are sustaining the highs. And sustaining the highs, uh, normally people used to go with that of uh, the closing level. But they simply pretend as if they can close higher and the next day they can drop it like this. So ultimately what you need to see is, are they buying at a higher level? Are they booking profit or buying at the higher level when all others selling? So that we need to observe that that could trigger the market to go upward. I will give that uh, information as and when that sort of observations are made in the market. So Euro has got a potency to go to 1.3738 area very soon. But the volume would be a constraint for the market to make quick moves. So we have to be patient looking for such moves. To the first time, you can only do swing trades. In Matthew, for the prolonged period, players holding Euro and Chip be on the downside within a range. Will they do any extended downward move before reversal? Uh, that sort of extended downward move could happen uh, only during month and not during the, the month, mid-month. So now we are in the mid-month, so that sort of extended moves are not expected to happen. Either they should have finished it by first week, they have not done it, so they do not want to drop and give profit booking opportunities for the short sellers as well. And those who sell after the gain, they might be able to see the next day some profit. But otherwise, people don't hold the positions that way. Sell on Friday and try to cover it on Monday. They don't do it. So obviously, the players are just inducing the short sellers to do the short covering on Friday. And those who buy with a bullish wheel or hold the Friday position, long positions to close it at a higher level on Monday, they just drop it and hit the stops on the downside and then continue the gain. Do you anticipate your own uh, nearing parity? Parity is 1.000, not 1.30, or last month low of 3138. Now, I'm not anticipating, honestly, because we are expecting the market to come up, but they are acting against us on showing down, down. 
No, because you lose patience. That is why you come across, you get the feel that it is coming down, down. But after the game, they lose only the games. But they are not going to that of the lower level strongly. So this is basically testing the patience of the traders, inducing them to do the sell and buy trade. So next time when they go to 1.34, the traders will freely sell. That is how they want the traders to develop the insight. And then trap them and induce them to do the short covering around 37, 38. This is the type of game they do it on a daily basis. You know, they test the patience of the traders and the impulsive traders uh, lose the patience and try to do the reversal of that what they envisage earlier and get trapped. And you know that some of the traders who have got the double up concepts that they buy and if the market drops immediately they sell double the quantity in order to earn back. And that sort of traders, they are testing the patience. Anytime they could do that sort of trades, by taking more sell positions than that of the buy what they had taken uh, in order to recover the last money and the players will show more losses to them. Can we see the spikes in this week? Yeah, Spike explained it. They are expected to do it. Uh, on Wednesday during the Japanese session and also on Thursday late European session, they could make quick upward spikes. Then what about USDCHF? USDCHF is expected to slowly gain the levels and hold, slowly gain the levels and hold. With a little bit of downward move, you can buy. And that is why in the case of Euro, GBB, USDN and USDCHF, whenever they make a downward stop and or come closer to low or not breach the low for more than 30 minutes, you can buy. Now Euro has come above that of the initial high, initial low, sorry, 33.44. And if they sustain here, 33.44 for more than 30 minutes, then the continuation of the rise will happen. Similarly, 56.30 is the initial low in the case of GPP. They sustain there, just see how they are going. It. Then Chan, USD CAD, can we see it go beyond 1.35 this week? Mm. Yeah, the potency is there, but it all depends upon the volume and how they are handling. See, whenever the volume gets reduced, they are handling the crosses. So you find predominant of the time they are handling the crosses. So that shows that really they are wanting the volume to pick up in order to make good moves. Then fusion. I am from India. Okay. Glad to know that. And Francisco, in case of gain, which currency would be stronger and create the sentiments? Euro GBP or Australian dollar? As you know that Australian dollar, the commodity pairs are expected to lead the rally and lag behind. So initial leading, you can bet on Australian dollar. And the continuation of the rally, you bet on Euro and GBP. That's what I could suggest. After the gains of 1.03, don't long Australian dollar. Then it might become a risky trade, high level buys. In Balu, what will be USD INR? INR, they are just uh, gain the levels for the big beginning, so around 52 area, 52, 34, 52, 35 are the current levels, and they are expected to uh, make it stronger. That is, uh, USD INR is expected to come down in this particular week, and next week we'll come across INR trading below 150. Then fusion. How Australian dollar depend on metal commodities? See, the Australian dollar is known to be an exporter of metal and especially gold, etc. So normally their strength and weaknesses are related to that of their exports and also the strength and weaknesses of their respective commodity. That is why 
Australian dollar and Canadian dollar are referred as the commodity pairs because their moves are supposed to follow the commodities. Then Shans, Euro CHF, is it likely to go to 1.25 area soon? Euro CHF coming down to 1.25 oh, area, yes. It is expected to go up to 1.25 and there could be a target of 1.30 soon in the case of Euro CHF because the way in which they are holding the Swiss franc around 92, they are doing a prolonged consolidation here because Euro is also under the consolidation. They are expected to gain the levels in the case of USD CHF very nicely suddenly. In the name of intervention or any other news, they could suddenly make it. Then Irish effect Greek. They expect Australian dollar to go to 1.05 near end of the month. Uh, end of the month around 1.03 to 0.4 area. And then afterwards next year, January, February, it can go to 1.06 area. Then in case they hold euro at the initial low for 30 minutes, it will arise. Should we consider buying it anytime or start of the session and the end of the session? Okay. Now euro has made that downward stop and, and come above that of the initial low 33.44 and it has to sustain. And once it sustains, by the time it is 526 GMT now and you know that uh, uh, the Europe, the Japanese session gets over by 7.30 GMT and the last one and a half hours from 6 to 7.30 GMT will be the late session. So during that late session, you can buy around that of the initial low and try to book profit. In the mid session, when, while handling the process, they make a downward stop and then stop cutting the low for more than 30 minutes. Then you can buy and use the hedging order to limit the risk and try to keep stop at entry once the position makes a profit of 20 pips or more. So systematically, if you do that, they stop you out, no problem because you don't lose any money on that. And again, re-enter the market when they show a new low or closer to low or come to that of the new low and then don't breach it for about 30 minutes. That means it's a false move to move forward very quickly. And that time, if you try to buy it, you'll be able to see quick moves. See, in the mid-session, you can buy it, but only thing is they will hold it and test your patience. But late session, they'll be very active. Probably you might be buying around 33.45 or 33.49, but still, it might be all right because quickly they are expected to gain the levels to a close of Japanese session. At that time, you can keep stop at entry and book 20, 30 pips profit. And gap time move, you watch and then follow the European session. So that way, if you try to do it during the session start and session close time, then you'll be really benefiting from that. Rather than trying to take at the mid-level, mid-session, mid it might be good to take a buy position around the 33, 35. Only thing is you have to wait for them to rise. And that may take about two to two and a half hours. Then you may lose patience. Always see that your patience is not tested vulnerably by the market. So for that, your entry time and the exit times, or with regard to session start and session close duration, then it will be uh, really a quick trade for you. then iris FX. That means we should expect upward trend move uh, by both December, January. Yeah, by both December, January and February, the upward move is expected to happen. And Shane, any viewers, New Zealand dollar for the year end to a paper rise? Yeah, that is possible. Because when Australian dollar starts gaining, New Zealand dollar is also expected to gain. And you know that in order to handle Aussie New Zealand dollar cross, they gain more sometimes in the case of New Zealand dollar because a lot of traders go in for a shorting at that time, then they make an upward stop and for, to hit their stops before making a slide. 
that is how because australian dollar i mean new zealand dollar the uh, volume is relatively very less when compared to that of australian dollar and that is why they are known to make more volatile move in the case of new zealand dollars so virulent currency so no more questions so let me go back to that of the powerpoint presentation so expected market moves for uh, japanese session swing and form of move during that of the japanese session and european session swing and slide moves may be seen and your session swing and rise moves are expected to happen so if you buy now then try to book profit during that of the early or mid european session then again during the late european session slide you buy and try to close it during that of the us session rise that way you can try to do the swing trades for today and tomorrow you could come across again volatile moves in the market and whenever they make a quick drop buy whenever they make a quick rise book profit on that and in the low volume condition they are bound to make this sort of either way stop and moves in order to earn their money ultimately you know that the players are here to earn money not uh getting any reward by showing extreme levels and things like that so ultimately they are working for money so we should also work for money in trading rather than having a sentiments and feeling pity that why euro is so weak and things like that but that is not going to give us any sort of benefit and we have to only look for the trading opportunities rather than worrying about the respective countries and with regard to the initial lows and the high zero formed the low 1.3344 they breached it and come closer to low initial low and they are still holding below that <laughs> so they could <coughs> come to initial i mean the recent low they could come to initial low and then go up there is a possibility but on 6 gmt they could come closer to low and then go up because they are just holding it below that of the initial low then in the case of gbp they breached the low by two pips and they are holding it and they are holding it around that of the initial low in the case of chf they just breached the high and they are holding around that of the initial high yen they are not breached in the case of australian dollar they are just holding around that of the initial they have come up above that of the initial uh, low it indicates that commodity pair is leading the rally and euro and gbp are expected to go up and high is not breached they are very soon they are expected to breach the high in the case of australian dollar canadian dollar uh, is not breached the low but they breached the high and still they are holding below that of the initial high they could make swing here and then continue the rise upwards so these are all the observations i could make now during the start of the week so as the week proceeds we will try to identify what sort of moves they could do it whether the volume improvement is seen in the market whether big players are trying to use different strategy all those things we will try to review it during our, our asian session live market analysis on a daily basis so i take this opportunity to FX Street and also you people who have come here to listen to my webinar, and I'll come back again by 5 GMT tomorrow and continue the review. Meanwhile, uh, any interesting moves observed in the market, I'll try to give the updates in the blog for your benefit. Thank you, one and all. See you tomorrow.